How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews. Back a little Tonks Brewing up in this piece in the form of their Angel's Trumpet Double IPA. It's got this big red thing going, double dry hopped on the side. So it's double dry hopped. Um, yeah, this comes courtesy of my boy Steven, new brewery time. This is about the second or third one I've done of these guys that Steven dropped off during Beer Tube Palooza. And these guys are a 12% beer project brew, uh, company. And uh, my boys. Is this one, I, I, I think in the unboxing, I called it very Brian Frouty in a new school kind of way. This is probably the nicest label out of all the ones they've had. The other ones looked a little bit kind of amateur. This one's not as amateur. Let's put it that way. But yeah. sometimes it's like ghetto labels. There's a frog on it. The other ones had a puffer fish and something else. So I'm not going to say I hate them. And I just I see this frog. I like it. They, it's the little little. Frog. I don't know what tox means. It probably has something to do with a frog. You got this little woodland fairy about to like try to get this frog up in this piece. So yeah, tells a story. Uh, double IPA, double dry hopped in red, mind you. Looks that part. Index finger, just north of white, just south of khaki colored. Super tight compact bubble head. OJ level kind of orange going on. Nose hair. Yeah, new school hazy. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, rich, uh, sweet OJ veering into an orangina kind of tangy kind of thing, but not quite getting there. I think the beer's going to skew a little bit sweet. And then there's a soft little green floating around the edges. Done and done. It's not a gigantic nose. Not a big nose, especially for an 8% beer. But there's something in there. Let's dive in. Cheers. I like that. I like that. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to feel bad about saying it. No, I'm not going to feel bad, but I might get a little guff about saying it. This tastes like a beer that is from a brewery who's just getting it. it sounds infinitely pretentious for me, non-brewer on a fucking YouTube, to say, there, these people are getting it, you know, but... It has so many kind of like little tent pole kind of moments to it. You know, the mouth feels nice and soft and creamy. That OJ level is pretty nice there. That sweetness is a little bit extra sweet, but not too crazy. It's more of like a powder, a soft powdered sweetness, not like totally confectionery, but not totally like sugar sweetness. Somewhere in between. There's a little bit of fluttering green. I mean, all the check marks there for really well done. As far as I'm concerned, really well done. New England style double IPA are there. There's just a little bit of disconnect between each and every one of those ingredients, and that's why I come with the statement of they're getting it. They're getting it. They're, I think in like they're like a months away from like just crushing, super banging, well done kind of big old hazies. And like I said, that sounds like infinitely douchey from some dude who just talks on YouTube about beer, but that's how it tastes to me. In a very, very exciting way. I'm not trying to uh, trying to hammer home that I'm being a douche about it. I understand how that can come off like that. But I'm, I'm trying to say, like, this beer gets me super hyper excited to try these guys. And I think that's kind of been my experience so far with these guys. You know, like they're, um, the stout I had from them... Um, which I believe was a mystery beer. Yes. It was just too sweet for me. I think they kind of mature into that beer. It was quite nice. It had the parts that you'd want from a pastry candy bar stout. It's just they need to kind of refine it. And that's kind of where this one is, too. It's really tasty beer. Hits all the marks you want from a new hazy kind of great big old double IPA. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit of refinement, and it's just not going to add the park. So, what am I drinking? Let's get to there. So, it's definitely sweet. It's not super, like, refined sugar sweetness, but it's not that confectionery soft powderiness. Somewhere in between. Sweetness on top of this vibrant orange component. That's why it leans into a little bit of orangina, a little bit of tangy kind of thing. I think once you kind of wrestle that sweetness into something a bit softer, that's where it ends up being a little bit more believable. The old noggin, that it's kind of more fruit juice than a kind of sweetened fruit, artificial fruit juice uh, kind of thing. 
There's a fluttering green. That's on point. I like that fluttering green. It's not too aggressive, but it knows. It lets you know that the beer has a bittering side to it without getting in the way. The mouthfeel is quite nice. It's not water nerdy level stuff, but I'm not going to complain about the mouthfeel on this. Like I said, for double IPA, it's drinking like a double IPA. So that's you know, it's hitting its ABV mark. It's giving me what I want from my um, from my double IPAs. It's just that sweetness and how everything's interconnected. And I think once you dial that sweetness into a different direction, um, the beer becomes world class Mount Rushmore status stuff as opposed to just really well done double IPA, which this beer is. Yeah, is it one of the better ones? Yeah, it is. It is. It's is it towards the top? It's it's not knocking on the door, but it's leaning towards there. Um, I want to try this beer in a year. I want to go back to this brewery, drink this exact beer, and see where it is. It's the same thing, fine, whatever, great beer. But I could see it becoming just bonkers good. Valued availability in this, I actually have no idea. Tox is new to me, but it's 12% beer project, so I'm guessing a double IPA from 12% is going to run 18 to 20 bucks. Let me know if I'm wrong, Steven, and leave you with, if you like what we like this beer, if you like... Um, just big old double IPA hazies. I mean, you pick this up. If hazies are your game, and that's what you like to drink almost exclusively, this is ready to drink. This is, you pick this up, you drink this, you are happy. If you like a little bit more kind of cohesiveness, nuance, whatever, blah, 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 and your beer, a little bit more kind of continuity, for lack of a better term, you're still going to like this, but I think it's going to make you a little bit more excited for what comes down the pipe from these guys in the future. Brass Texas. If you like breweries trying to do fun stuff, which it's apparent that's what Tox is trying to do, definitely worth picking up. There you go. Thank you very much again, Stephen, for uh, sending the sucker off, dropping the sucker off. Actually, uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed our review down there. If you want to talk about it, especially if you've had this sucker, let me know. Um, massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Pierre Messi. If you want to check me out doing a whole podcasting thing, hopefully, you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully, you're enjoying a little Tox right now. Hopefully, see you next time.